Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Johanna Chan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Pro-democracy figures, including Jimmy Lai and Lee Chuck Yan, jailed up to 14 months over banned June 4th vigil last year. School pledges to be more sensitive after showing graphic war footage to distressed primary students. And experts call on government to speed up rollout of COVID booster shots in face of Omicron outbreak. Eight pro-democracy figures were given up to 14 months behind bars for taking part in an unauthorized assembly on June 4th last year. Next media boss Jimmy Lai will be serving a sentence concurrently with his other convictions. Winner Wong has the latest. It was sentencing day for Apple Daily founder Jimmy Lai, former vice chairman of the now defunct Hong Kong alliance Chow Hang Tong, and ex Stand News reporter Gwyneth Ho. The trio, who were the only ones that denied their June 4th charges from last year, were convicted on all counts by a district court judge on Thursday. They and five others who pleaded guilty found out their punishments today. Lee Chuck Yan, former chairman of the alliance that hosted Hong Kong's June 4th vigils, got 14 months in prison over three charges. Jimmy Lai was sentenced to 13 months in prison. Chow, along with fellow alliance member Richard Choi, got 12 months. Leung Yu Chung and Leung Kam Wai each got nine months. Gwyneth Ho got six months, and Wu Chi Wai got four months and two weeks. The court allowed Li, Lai, Choi, and Leung to serve concurrently with their sentences from other protest-related convictions. During mitigation earlier in the day, Lai's lawyer read out a letter from his client in prison. I did not join the June 4th vigil in Victoria Park. I lit a candlelight in front of reporters to remind the world to remember and commemorate those young men and women who 31 years ago in Tiananmen Square put truth, just and goodness above their lives and died for them, he wrote. If commemorating those who died because of injustice is a crime, then inflict on me that crime and let me suffer the punishment of this crime. In her statement, Chow Hang Tung said, people moved by conscience cannot be deterred by jail. Rest assured that the candlelight will live on, despite bans and ever more restrictive laws. For when mass action is condemned, individual leniency is but a farce. A total of 26 people were charged over an unlawful assembly commemorating June 4th last year. The gathering had been banned by authorities due to social distancing rules. 21 of them pleaded guilty, three not guilty, while Nathan Law and Sonny Chung are in self-exile in the UK and US. Wen Wong, HKIBC. The central government offices in Tamar received a threatening letter addressed to Chief Executive Kerry Lam today. A blade was also found inside the parcel. Office staff called the police to handle the case. In a statement, a government spokesperson said Hong Kong is a society ruled by law. Violence and intimidation will not be tolerated. A primary school is offering counseling services after young students were shown graphic footage from the Nanjing massacre, causing some to cry. The clip belonged to an official teaching kit, but the Education Bureau insisted schools have the final say on how to use it. Tin Moon's Union Primary School found itself in hot water after reports surfaced that it screened graphic footage from the Nanjing massacre in a moral education class last week. Pupils as young as six were made to watch civilians being executed by Japanese soldiers, as well as corpses of infants on the ground. The five-minute video clip was part of a teaching kit provided by the Education Bureau, which asked schools to mark the historical event ahead of its 84th anniversary today. Recalling the class last week, this second grader said his teacher continued to play the video, even though some classmates began crying. He said some of them covered their faces with books. Another primary four student said teachers asked them to describe their feelings and thoughts about the massacre. The school said it was heartbroken the children were upset, but stopped short of an apology. 
It will now offer counseling services and pledge to be more sensitive to students' feelings in the future. Speaking to iCable News, former Education Chief Eddie Ng said teachers should adjust to the prevailing situation instead of executing instructions like robots. Veteran educator and primary school principal Langton Chung revealed the teaching materials were not classified according to grades. But he said many schools, including his, chose not to screen the footage. In defense, the Education Bureau said schools can decide whether to use the clips. It added there is no shying away from history and that war is cruel. A solemn ritual was held in Nanjing this morning to mark the hundreds of thousands of victims who died during the Japanese invasion 84 years ago. At 10 a.m., the city of 8.5 million people joined attendees dressed in black at the Memorial Hall to observe a moment of silence. Vice Premier Sun Chunlan saluted the victims and pledged China's determination for peaceful development. China accused Japan of slaughtering 300,000 people, including women and children, in six weeks after it seized control of Nanjing. But that figure was disputed by Japan, while regular visits by politicians to a shrine commemorating war generals continued to inflame China and South Korea. Hong Kong now has a total of seven Omicron cases after two more were added to the tally today. Both patients tested positive for COVID at the airport when they landed from England last week. Meanwhile, medical experts in the city urged those who still haven't been inoculated to sign up for a jab as soon as possible. Isaac Lee tells us more. A joint study by Hong Kong's two medical schools has revealed that BioNTech vaccines offer very little protection, if at all, against the Omicron variants. Researchers found that while neutralizing antibodies for the typical virus stood at 320 units, that number plunged to just 10 units for Omicron. Commenting on the findings on radio, Chinese University professor David Hoy said that the low level of antibodies may not be enough to tackle Omicron. Vaccines, however, remain effective in lowering the risk of death or serious diseases caused by COVID, he insisted. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, which produces BioNTech, has earlier announced the development of a new vaccine specifically targeting Omicron. Instead of waiting for the next generation of the jabs, Hoi felt a more practical solution is to sign up for a third shot, which will boost antibody levels by 25 times. But rather than waiting six months between the second and third doses, the respiratory disease expert believes the time can be shortened pending discussions. Speaking on the same program, fellow government advisor Ivan Hong said scientists are still learning about Omicron, such as its transmissibility and symptoms. He said with an outbreak in Europe, more information will become available in the coming weeks. Isaac Lee, HKIBC. The city's privacy watchdog has made its first arrest under the anti-doxing ordinance enacted two months ago. A 31-year-old man was arrested in West Kowloon for allegedly revealing a person's personal data online. The privacy commissioner's office said a money dispute was involved, but refused to disclose more details. The man remains remanded by police as investigations continue. The anti-doxing law was proposed after a surge in doxing cases during the 2019 social unrest. A personal data officer warned people could fall foul of the law by sharing posts of similar nature. The purpose of the new, uh, of the new requirement of the ordinance is the, uh, to control and to uh, punish uh, doxing ads. So if you are only doing uh, normal internet activities, you are not doxing other people, uh, you will not be governed by this ordinance. But if you are, you are doing doxing ads, you'll be governed and you'll be, you will need to be careful with what you do online. 47 million sticks of illicit cigarettes have been seized in a customs operation last week, the largest single bust in two decades. Officers intercepted three container trucks in Tingyi last Friday and recovered 31 million untaxed cigarettes. Another 16 million sticks were later found at a nearby pier. Around $89 million of tax would be levied on the items, worth $130 million. Three drivers aged between 46 and 55 were arrested.
Customs says it has seized twice the amount of illicit cigarettes this year compared to the total last year. The Eastern Magistracy has granted bail to a domestic helper who allegedly caused a deadly traffic accident in Soho last week. Filipino Maxino Reshiel Lagurin was accused of dangerous driving causing death. She must now surrender all travel documents and remain in Hong Kong before the next court hearing in April. Last Friday, the 44-year-old pulled over at the intersection between Staunton Street and Peel Street. The vehicle then rolled backwards and bowled over multiple passers-by. One victim succumbed to her injuries in hospital a day later. And coming up after the break. U.S. state of Kentucky slowly picking up the pieces following devastating tornado strike.